Hi, and uh, welcome to this video on Tetris in AL. Hi, this is a uh, this is a first on the channel. Uh, this is actually a video on not something I have written, but code from from a guy called Get uh, Get Lung. And um, this story actually starts because I have to start with a story in order for this to make any sense. Um, this story actually starts uh, at, at this video of mine about the fin sweep, uh, mind sweep game I made in, in financials. If you, and you, of course you have seen this because you subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, you know, hit subscribe and uh, don't miss any uh, of the awesome videos that are coming up. Anyway, down here in the comments, get right. Sorry, not financials, but in Danish and in the Microsoft ERP system, does that count too? And um, he links to something in dynamic C5. And uh, C5, um, so the, the the short story lesson here is that um, back in Denmark, when Navision uh, was one of the offerings, the 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 competitor competitor was a, a company called uh, Damgard. Um, they created a product called Concord, and um, and that was like the the fierce competition in Denmark between those two products. And um, at some point. The company merged. Um, Navision, the product Navision, was Navision, and and the product from Damco at that time was called Acceptor. Then Microsoft came along, bought the uh, the company, and Navision became Nav, and Acceptor became AX. Everything became Dynamics, and um, the the left over the old product, the old Damco product. Um, was called C5, um, and Git had written a a Tetris clone for this one, um, and pretty cool actually. Um, the code to that one was something. It, it well, we're we're better off with AL now. Uh, the code to to forms back in in. XAL, as it was called, uh, C5, was kind of um, interesting. Um, anyway, back to the story. So Git writes, hey, this is, does that count too? Uh, and I had to reply, no, nice, but I'm not the one to show off Concord. Uh, and he wrote, guess I'll have to port it to AL then. Wink. And Foolish of me. No, not foolish of me. I think it's pretty cool. I said, do that and I'll do a video on it, which is the video you're watching right now. Um, and uh, he just wrote a, a link to his blog post on uh, on the thing he, he has made. So that's kind of how we came about to where we are now. So at some point, Gear sent me a, a, an app and say, hey, Here's AL Tris, um, written for uh, Business Central, and um, for BC14 or, or later, I'm running it on 16, works just fine. And um, as you can see, he was, he was pretty nice inspiration for timers, controls, and sound. So he used some of my videos and some other uh, links to figure out how to do this. And he actually was so nice to put on design goals here. As few objects as possible. Nice. All logic in AL. So use the, the JavaScript stuff just for the presentation part. Everything else has to be AL. And well, for any games, it's pretty good to have a, a design goal called playable. So let's actually, I'll hit a five here. And let's take a look at this and see how, how it looks. And then um, 
then we'll dive into how he made it. So we can see that there's a page and um, and by the way, do check out Git, follow him on LinkedIn, check his blog, um, check the company blog, um, awesome work. So um, it's all there. Um, and I'll pull it in the uh, in the description under the video also. So I guess arrows left, down, right, left, down and right and space. I'll hit new game and we're off to the races. This works like I guess this is works like just like Tetris. Let's see if we can, if it allows us to do the move in the last second. It does. So this is this is pretty good. Let's see if I can remove before. We don't want to watch me just playing Tetris, but uh, it's, it's, it's amazing these games that even though they are. I don't know how many years they are. They, they're, they're still fun to play. Okay, this is it. I'm totally gonna get something here. The line removed. So the, the part about this being playable is, is certainly true. I th this, is, this is awesome. And we got the, the animation for the for the next and and I gotta see if I'm good here. Let's see that and I get the and it removed all four lines. So I think we can say with certainty that uh, this is Okay, let's, uh, no, I'm gonna, because I'm so good at Tetris that you guys are gonna watch me for hours. We got a game over and that's clearly a uh, Business Central dialogue. So let's take a look at how this is made. And hey, look at that score, Almost over half a million. That's pretty cool. Um, I'll stop the debugger. And I'll close the README and let's let's look at what we have here. So oh, let me make this just a tad bigger so we have a chance to see what's what's in here. Um, there's a logo. That's fine. The README we looked at app JSON. I don't think Simtek AS AS is the Danish uh, like incorporated. Um, AL trace, nothing, nothing unusual in here. There's only ID range is only opening up for one single object. That's pretty cool. Um, so let's look at we we have a JavaScript folder and then we have one AL file. So I think if we look at this single uh, AL file, we can see that there's some, some control add-in and a page. That's it. So that's what we. So let's look at the control add-in first. Uh, start a script and a script. Horizontal strip, st stretch, vertical stretch, and 400 height. Event control ready. Event new game. Event timer elapsed. Event on key down. Procedure. Render, set background caller, set element value, start timer, stop timer, set element disabled, and beep. Okay, so let's take a look at startup script. Startup script basically looks like what I did in the video that he listed under uh, inspiration. So we used the HTML container set that and then he added an event listener on the key down. So if you remember, let's actually deploy this again. Let me show you. So if you have seen some of my other videos where I talk where the spe specifically the, the barcode video where, where I need to figure out where the, the keyboard input is. So right now, um, we had the error. So if I click here, and then I put the 
click up here somewhere. Now the keys won't work because the the iframe has lost um, the uh, the keyboard focus. But if I click into the iframe, then it works again. So Gear is is very clever in um, if I, I reload the page by creating this one the new game button then he's actually forcing the uh, the ui to have focus in in the iframe that's that's a pretty neat trick um and in the script part well an html render function that's exactly for my dynamic uh, html video um set background color get element by id dot style dot background color equal to parameter that's and the same thing with the value just setting inner text so i have not done a video on timers um so the great thing about if you want to have a timer there's no timer uh, in in al we used to have one in back on uh, on forms in, in classic uh, classic uh nav but no longer but you can easily create one in um, in javascript and this is what git has done here so he have a um uses the window dot set interval to call execute timer and one every millisecond and um, the execute timer is down here uh, you see that um and it simple calls back so that will trigger the um, sorry that will trigger the um, the event inside um, inside al stop the timer again disable an element and another thing that we cannot do with uh, with business central out of the box is making sounds uh, you can force what I did in the, in in the in the streams video where I built wave files from uh, from AL, but this is different. So he created a beep function that actually uses um, the built-in sound generator in uh, in, in JavaScript. Um, so so right now we have a square beep. Um, I turned off sounds when I uh, when I played it here um, but this is pretty cool so this is actually a way to make sounds so if you want to beep something at your users then you can use this this is pretty cool um, and then a new game execute timer on key down so um, new game is probably triggered by hitting that bottom so so this is pretty cool let's take a look at the the page of course, we have the control at end that basically is the interface for all the functions we just saw. So that's um, it's pretty pretty obvious. Then we have a page, one page, um, and and <laughs> this is this is actually interesting. So so when 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 you look at this page here, then let me ask you what what page type is this? And and if if we look at this, then there is no page type. Um, so so what happened if we add a page type to this? Let's say this is a card. I think that looks pretty much the exact same as this one, um, but in some cases the the page type that is not really a page type seems to behave differently and if you forget the page type you most certainly will um will break some of like the, the intelligence so so if i in this case we have no page type i go in and then i want to add a repeater um Oh, we need a source table also. Now I'm totally breaking this thing to, to tell you about something that's mostly ir irrelevant. And we haven't turned, um, <laughs> okay, 
Uh, so what I wanted to show, but we haven't turned um, all the um, code analyzers on, is that you'll get an arrow saying that you cannot use a repeater in the web client, which is a bogus error, but it's actually the reason is that you have put a repeat on something that is a card type nothing. Anyway, okay, let's uh, keep going here. So the layout, we have the user control, and we can see we have the control ready trigger, uh, and that calls the render function. And um, it, there's a function called generate page HTML. Let's take a look at that one. And this one is basically, you see, string stoops number. So this has a, uses a table for, for the layout. And then you can see the percentage one, percentage two, uh, three, four, six comes before five, that doesn't matter, and and seven. So all these soups will be replaced with what we have down here. So we have the game name label. We have the bot, generate bot HTML 10, 20. Um, so we could probably break the game very quickly by saying that this should be 15 wide. Let's see what happens. So now it's 15 wide, but I'm not allowed. So, so I'm not allowed to move out there because I didn't really change the dimension of, uh, of the game. I just changed the dimension of how it was rendered. Um, but that's pretty cool too. So if we look at this, this will build a table and for y equal one to size y, we get rows, and for x equal one to size x, we get uh, a cell. So that's pretty nice. And then this one, Git loves to use the uh, the named return value, so you cannot see that the function is returning anything, but HTML is the return value. Um, so that is pretty cool. Next piece label and generate a board. So actually he reuses. So if we go back and look at this, we have the board here, but this is actually also a board. Um, so he uses the same function just to generate another uh, small board to show the, the next piece. That's nice. We get the bottom and then we have the, uh, all the, all the credits and, and info thing. So, so that's the render. Then let's look at new game. Oh, hang on. The new game trigger. So new game, disable the new game button. So you cannot press it again. That's probably pretty good. Randomize. Uh, so make sure that the random function is actually random. And then you can see he has a variable called global field. Um, Go global play field. Global play field is just a long string with 10 by 20. So, so this is basically 200 characters and um, the 200 characters will, um, will just be all the, all the fields here. So, so if we take a look at uh we can we can uh, we can go in and then we can do let's set a breakpoint around here Let, let's run this again I'll, and then we got a breakpoint. So if we look at global play field, you can see that, let's see if it's easier to see in here. So right now we have, you know, JJJ and then some, and then a J on the next line. If we go back and look, we can see we have three 
boxes and then a box on the next one. So each character is a, is a box. Um, so 10 by 20. So basically that's the way he represented the, the, the board. Um, let's go back up a second. Um, so he builds the board and, and put a, a underscore as a blank board. And then he starts the timer and he passes the speed. So in theory we could, let's change the speed, see what happens. And I said it's five, so now it's crazy slow. Uh, that, was, that was probably stupid of me. That was very, very slow. Let's let's do something then. Otherwise, then. Oh, sorry, that was the debugger. Uh, that did not seem to do anything useful. Let's go back and continue the. Uh, Okay, and I'm gonna remove that breakpoint before the next time I'm gonna get confused by it. Ha! Um, I'll just put that back to 500. So that is passed into the timer. Um, we have the timer elapsed, meaning that it's over. Uh, no, sorry, means that it will. This is where we, we will check for game over also. I was totally mesmerized by this game over. So time elapse is, is every time the timer is triggered. Um, and what he does here is that he stops the timer when he processes because it might be different depending on what he do. It might take a different time. So instead of uh, having the process time taken off, um the interval then he actually adds the interval between uh, and which probably means that you know when you're moving fields around in tetris it, the times kind of stop so you can can do more so i think it actually makes sense um and oh there's a beep let's look at the show and move piece um and you see we can get a coordination pair so let's actually so you see that the j was was for for a a blue box what i wanted to find is up here actually so basically every every brick you're getting is um is four blocks so he built simply a uh, a set of relative pairs uh, and the four blocks will always happen within a four by four six sixteen grid meaning that the the if his eye which is is just the the, the four the line it can either be rotated uh being upwards well, by horizontal or vertical, um, so we get a, the two two sets of pairs, meaning one point one, two point one, three point one. So, so x and y, x and y, x and y, or one point one, one point two, one point three, one point four. So it's the other way. So this is like a lookup table um, for all the different uh, types, and add them together. I'm just looking at the time and saying this is probably how long I'll go. So I think this is pretty cool. Um, and I think it's awesome that Git went through the trouble of uh, actually taking my dare and saying, hey, uh, if, if you write it, I'll show it. Uh, but if, if, you, if you have something that's cool, and, and you don't mind me showing it in the channel like this, uh, send it to me. I cannot promise that I'll show everything people are sending to me, but if it's cool and I think it's cool, I will sh make a video on it. And I'll, I'll sh poke around in it just like I did here. Um, 
I think this is this is awesome what what Git has done and uh, just shows the power of the platform and and I love the fact that this is actually AL. Yeah, we use some JavaScript to uh, to handle the the UI and the sound, which I didn't play. Um, but everything is actually AL code, so that's that's pretty cool. If you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below. Go visit Git's page and uh, and write him a note on on Twitter or in the comments here. I'm sure he'll read them. Um, I think this is pretty cool. Uh, and until next time, have a wonderful day.